Hello. Today's lesson is about sending arrays into functions and procedures as parameters. Now, you already know that a, an array is a complex data type, and we can't send complex data types into functions and procedures as parameters. We can only send simple data types. So, we need to change my array into a simple data type, and that you've done as well in the previous videos. But here is the way I did it in this question. TR is now my new simple data type of array 1 dot dot 100 of integer. So whenever I declare a variable of type TR, it means I can store 100 values, but they have to be integers, into that new variable of type TR. So let's go and look at the question again. The question says write a program which makes use of a function to fill up an array and a procedure to display the array. So a function and a procedure, and I must new, use a new data type. So let's go and look at the button. So here's my button. I have a local variable, int array 1, and it is of type tr. So I know that this variable, it's now a simple data type, tr, can store up to 100 integer values. And this local variable, how big, will show us how many of those hundred elements we are going to use. So the first thing I do is I ask the user with an input box to tell me how many of the hundred elements in the array I want to use and let's assume he's going to say five. And in this line, int array one, that one, is equal to a function called get values. And I'm sending into get values my array because my array is now a simple data type as well as of course the size of the array that I want to use. So now it's time to go and look at get values. Get values is a function and it has received an array that is now of a simple data type into it as a parameter. So I go up. The function has to be higher up than the calling procedure or calling statement. So here it is. Function get values and it's defined as receiving an array of type tr and some size. Notice that these variable names here are really temporary. They only exist in the function, but they must receive the, the parameter from the calling statement. But this function is itself of type tr, so it will produce a result of tr. I have a temporary loop variable, and I run my loop from 1 to temp size, and I randomize results or answers and I store them in loop. So only temp size, in other words, let's say five, that's what I said I'll enter. Five elements are randomly generated and stored in the loop, and this loop is returned into the name of the function, get values, because that function is of the data type tr. By the way, whenever we use random, we should somewhere, before I use random, have the word randomize. And look, there it is, but where is it executed? So I put it on the form in the activity, or let me show you, here in the event of on form create. So how do I find that on form create? Well, I click on the form. So there's my form. Click on the form itself so that the form is selected. Then go to events and go to on create, double click, and that's where I can put my randomizer so that it happens automatically right at the beginning of the program. I hope I've shown you how to send, how to firstly create a simple data type for an array which we can send as a parameter into the function, and even this function is of that data type. So let's go back to the button. The button then says display. So that's a procedure because it's called in a different way from the function. Display, int array 1, and how big. So I'm once again sending in an array as well as the size. In other words, how many elements of this array. Because this array can contain 100. But we've filled up only how big number of them. Okay, so how big should be 5 if I chose 5 at the beginning. So let's go and look at this procedure. Procedure display receives an array. Notice, once again, this uh, name of that array 
and that name seem to be the same, but they don't have to. They can be entirely different. And I try to demonstrate this by making a size, which is this integer, and temp size give them different values, even though both of them receive from the calling statement the value how big. Okay, so let me just say that again. In a procedure, these are local variables. Temporary as well, because they only exist as long as this procedure is being executed. So in the procedure, these are local variables. doesn't matter what their names are, because they will receive the parameter placed in that position. This is the first position. That first position will go into this first position. And the second one there will receive that value down here. Great, but we're busy with the procedure, display. So the display procedure looks as follows. It gets in my array and the number of elements that I want to display. I've just put in an empty line and a heading and I run from one to size, a size, that one there. And I display readout.lines.add, but notice something else. Form one dot readout.lines.add, because this procedure is one that I wrote. Whenever I merely click on a button and it creates a procedure, the word tform1 is automatically added in front of the name of the procedure. But it doesn't happen when I create my own. So now this procedure does not belong to the form. I'll have to tell it which form the readout is on. So that's why I put it, that's why I write here form1.readout.lines.add is where I do my output. So this procedure can print onto the screen or onto the rich edit, but it has to be told where the rich edit lies, on which form.